Now looking at an example where we're trying to find the area of the shaded region of the graph that is given. We're given that the equation is f of x equals x squared minus 2x. So I know that that's going to be my integrand. So x squared minus 2x dx. The thing is that when we're finding area, we have to take in count if the graph falls below the x-axis. If it falls below the x-axis, we break up that piece as a separate integral and we sum the absolute value of that because really this area below the x-axis is gonna give us the negative of what our area is. And this would be positive if it's above the x-axis. If we aren't considering area um, and we took the antiderivative of this, the, that would give us the net area. What would be left if we summed a positive area plus a negative area? Would we have less area, some um, more of the areas underneath the curve and we'd get a negative answer or if more of the area was above the curve, we'd get a positive answer. Okay, so we wanna split this up, like I said, because we have part of it is above the curve and part of it's below the curve. So we first wanted to look at the area between negative one and two. I can see that's where the bounds of my X values are. But we can break up an integral into a sum of littler intervals. Like for instance, let's look at the area above the X axis. And so this would be the integral from negative one to zero, and then of my integrand, which is x squared minus two x dx, plus the area below, plus the absolute value of the area below the x-axis. So the bounds um, of the area below the x-axis is when x is zero to x is two. And, and the grand is x squared minus 2x dx. And so this one isn't too bad to take the antiderivative of it. We don't need to use, use substitution. We're just going to add one to our power, divide by our new power. So x squared, the antiderivative of that is x cubed over 3 minus 2. The antiderivative of x is add one to our power, divide by our power. So x squared over 2. And this is evaluated, I'm just gonna put my little bar here, between negative one and zero. Plus, well, when I take the antiderivative of the second one, it's the same thing, right? It's x cubed over three minus, and I can rewrite this, those twos cancel, minus x squared. And that absolute value, or that integral is bounded between zero and two and our absolute value. So let's go in there and let's plug in our values. So plugging in the upper bound, if we plug in our upper bound of zero, well here I would get zero cubed over three, which is zero minus zero squared, which is zero. So I have zero. Then we have to subtract off the whole quantity. Now we're gonna go in and we're gonna plug in negative one. So plugging in negative one, cubing it, I get negative one all over three is negative one third. Plugging in negative one and squaring it, I get positive one but I still have this minus out front. So minus one. Okay, so that was for that piece. Plus, so now we're gonna do the same thing. And this time, our upper bound though is two. So we're gonna first go in and we're gonna plug in two wherever we see an X. So plugging in our two, I get two cubed is eight over three. So that's eight thirds. So let me bring down my absolute values. 
minus plugging in two and squaring it, we get four. Minus parentheses, but if we go back in and we plug in zero wherever we saw an X, we get zero cubed, which is zero minus zero is zero. So let's clean this up a little bit. Um, we're gonna need a common denominator. You might as well get one. And I noticed my common denominator is gonna be three. And so I can think of this minus one over here as minus three thirds. And I'm gonna need that four is gonna also need a common denominator. So negative, negative one third minus three thirds is negative four thirds. Plus the absolute value, eight thirds minus 12 thirds. Eight thirds minus 12 thirds is negative four thirds. We're taking the absolute value of that. So negative negative is positive. So we really get four thirds plus four thirds, and this case is eight thirds. Units, whatever units we're talking about squared. So the area is gonna be eight thirds. We have one more example. We're trying to find the area under the curve and we're finding the area, the bound is one over E to E of our function, the natural log of X over X. Dx. And again, we're starting at one over E and we're going to E. The problem is that we're trying to find area and part of this graph falls below the X axis. And so we need to split this up into separate intervals. In our case, we're gonna do two. There's only two pieces of the graph, um, one piece below and one piece above. And so if we look at this first area that's below the X axis. And so we know that we need to put the absolute values there. And we're starting at one over E and we're ending when X is one. Of this natural log of X over X DX. Plus, now, if we look at it, we're looking at the area above the curve. And so that would be the integral. It's starting when x is one to the value of x is e of the same function, natural log of x over x dx. Okay, so I noticed, unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to use U substitution here because we don't know how to take the antiderivative of the natural log of X. So that clues me in, that's what I'm gonna choose my U value to be. So let's choose U to equal the natural log of X. So DU then is equal to derivative of natural log of X is one over X DX. And so DX, is x times du. Okay, so we have the integral here. Um, I'm gonna keep my bounds. I'm not gonna write them in because those are my x values. Let's, let's do this. Let's just write it for this piece for now. So for that piece, when I write natural log of X, that was my U all over X. And then my DX was this X DU. 
So notice my X's cancel. And so I only have the integral of u du, which is not too bad to take the antiderivative of. The problem is I need to change my bounds. So this was when x equals one over e. So if we go in there, and actually the natural log of one over e is not bad. So when x is one over e, u is equal to the natural log of one over e, but you can rewrite that as natural log of e to the negative one power. And again, logs are exponents. So it's what is my exponent that I'd raise e to to get back e to the negative one? Well, I would have to raise e to the negative one power to get back e to the negative one. So I can see that u here is equal to negative one. Oops, not x u. So when it, x was one over e, my u value is negative one. So you do the same thing, plug in e. So when x equals e. Well, u is equal to the natural log of e. What do I raise e to to get back e? Well, I raise e to one to get back e. So in this case, u is gonna equal positive one. So now we can rewrite the sum of our integrals with those bounds. And we get that we have an integral from negative one, um, oops. One other bound we have to look at, right? This one. So what about when X is one? Well, if you go back in there and you plug in one into u, u is equal to the natural log of one. Which is zero. Okay, so breaking it down again, we got negative one. To zero. Of this u du. That's the absolute value of that piece plus the integral. So we said when x was one, u is zero. And when x was e, we got u was one of u du. So antiderivative of u, that is add one to my exponent, divide by my new exponent. So u squared over two, evaluated from negative one to zero, and we're taking the absolute value. Plus, um, again, the antiderivative of u is u squared over two, but we're evaluating this from zero to one. Going in and plugging in zero, wherever I see a u, upper bound first, I get zero, minus plugging in negative one wherever I see a u, well, negative one quantity squared is one um, over two. So that's one half, and I'm taking the absolute value of that answer. Plus, now I'll plug in one wherever I see a u, so I get u squared, one squared over two is one over two, minus, now plug in zero wherever you see a u, so minus zero. So this gives me absolute value of negative one half is one half. 
So this is equal to one half plus one half, which is equal to just one. So the area bounded between the x-axis and the curve will be one unit squared. Okay, so let's um, take a break and then we'll come back and we'll look at it when we're not given the graph and we have to find the area under the curve and the steps to do that, which we did already did as an example. And then we'll jump into the last section of what we're covering this semester, which is the area bounded between two curves. We really have been doing two curves, but the curve that we've been bounding it between is that curve y equals zero. But we'll talk about that more in a, in a little bit. Professor, 